Today I'd like to share with you some of the best big decisions that I made for myself in life and I'll share with you why I'm happy with each decision and also some of the fears that I've had. I went to uni for business and finance, worked in my field for about a year, but ended up making videos on YouTube for a living instead. Everyone, so today I'll be answering. Hi, everyone. In Sweden, which is where I'm from and where I got my bachelor's, there's no tuition fee. And the reason I mentioned that is not to piss off all of the Americans, but to explain to you why I'm not mad at myself for choosing a degree that ended up having no return on investment for me. If I would be sitting here in tens of thousands of dollars in debt, all for a piece of paper that is laying in the back of a cabinet somewhere. I can't promise that it wouldn't be keeping me up at night. So why am I glad I went to university? Sure, I'm debt-free, but it was still three years of my life. Well, I'm mostly glad because getting my bachelor's is what led me to continue my studies at UCLA. See, the three years I spent studying in Sweden were mediocre at best. Sure, I met some cool people and there were some get-togethers that were okay, and one of my lecturers was actually very hilarious, but it's hardly enough for me to look back on it now with a grand smile on my face. My experience at UCLA, however, was anything but mediocre. I met all kinds of quirky and fun people, the campus was absolutely beautiful, and the parties were like what I'd seen in the movies. And there was a sense of community that wasn't at all like what I'd experienced back home. So essentially, I'm glad I spent those three years at university because they led me to somewhere that ended up being more than I could have dreamt of. Oh, and also because it showed me what I did not want to do with my life. Like, you've ever dated someone only to learn what you don't want? want. Yeah, it was that sort of thing. I knew I would not be on Wall Street anytime soon, crushing the dreams of 18-year-old me. But as you'll see, something much better was waiting. I feel like anyone who's ever lived abroad would add it to a list like this. I was a 21-year-old alien with zero sense of direction who did not know a single soul who was now an 11-hour flight away from anyone who loved and cared about her. That was probably the scariest thing about it all. Like, who would I turn to if I got sick or if I, like, actually got lost or got myself in trouble somehow? But that was about the only fear that I had. The rest of me was like a curious puppy ready to walk up to any stranger to play and to explore the world all on my own. Well, not the world, just a part of California, but you know what I mean. What a beautiful day in California. The weather's been so bad lately, but today it's perfect. What's up? Today is June. 18th, 2018. I'm moving back home to Sweden in three weeks. I have no idea what I'm really talking about or what I'm gonna say. I just spontaneously wanted to make a video to document this part of my life and no one's even ever gonna see this, which means I'm just talking to myself, which I do anyways, so I might as well record it. Another decision that I'm happy with in life is getting Skillshare, who is sponsoring us today. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. And with each class that you take, you can connect with other like-minded people who are taking the same classes. Top three fears that I had when deciding to sign up for Skillshare. What if it's so good that I become addicted and I don't get anything else done? What if I learn so much that I become smarter than everyone else and I end up feeling lonely because of that? What if I acquire so many random skills that other people start resenting me for and I start losing friends? But I decided to do it anyway and I've been taking classes on there for over two years now and I just started taking a class called Interior Design Basics, Simple Steps to Your Perfect Space by Lauren Cox. There is still so much for me to explore on Skillshare since they offer classes within a wide range of topics like productivity, writing, videography, and language learning. I highly recommend checking out Skillshare. It's definitely one of my top three favorite subscriptions and I have a lot of subscriptions so that says something. And I have an offer for you. So the first thousand of you guys to click the link in my description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare premium membership so that you can start exploring your creativity today. 
I think maybe because of the confidence that I had gained during those two years and all the fun that I'd had, as I moved back home to Sweden, I think I had adopted a mindset of refusing to be unhappy and unfulfilled. I got myself a job in my field of study, but that didn't last me too long. About six months into it, I caught myself cursing myself out on my commute to work. I fucking hate this, I fucking hate this, is what I would mumble to myself like a bitter old lady on the train. And I did not want to be a bitter old lady at the ripe age of 24 or however old I was. So, I quit. And I've never felt so terrified and liberated at the same time. And now I kind of want to mention that I did not hate my job because it was a 9 to 5. I hated it because it did not allow me to be creative. Bold of me to assume that I would make a living doing the stuff that I liked. But as I said, I kind of refused unhappiness. No, I love not my job. After I quit, I applied to so many jobs all in different creative fields. I did not even really care what it was. I just wanted something that would allow my creative juices to flow. God, that sounds gross. And after getting no, after no, after no, after no, I decided to focus more on this YouTube thing. And here we are two or three years later. Mind you, this story may sound very romantic because it's very romanticized. A lot more thought and calculations went into my decision. I'm not crazy. You knew this one had to make a list. I love what I do. I love that I get to sit down every week and write stuff down and tell them to the internet and that they're actually people who give a shit. Putting yourself out there for the world to judge is terrifying, but not doing it and wondering what if for the rest of your life is even more terrifying. So as with everything in life, you kind of got to pick your poison. I have absolutely turned into one of those people whose whole personality has become their pet. All the photos on my phone, 90% of anything that I post on Instagram is Fred, my four-legged best friend who came into my life about a year ago and made me the happiest little dog mom. Yes, I call myself a dog mom. Think of that what you want. Fred was not a pandemic baby. I had wanted a dog for as long as I can remember, but unlike the other things on this list, this one was the hardest decision. Now here's why. Any of the consequences that might have resulted from moving abroad or going to university or quitting my job would have only affected me. It wouldn't hurt anyone else. But getting a dog was different because a whole other life was involved. One that I would be fully responsible for. What if it'll be too much for me to handle? What if I will regret it? What if I can't give him the life that he deserves? What if? What if? What if? I got cold feet more than a few times. I remember the night before we were going to go pick him up. I called my sister, freaking out, telling her I was not doing it. I was too scared. Luckily, she knows me well enough to know that I was only getting cold feet, so she successfully talked me back into it, and not even 24 hours later, this tiny puppy boy was in my arms. Fred is the best thing that's happened to me, and I tell him every day. Now, dogs may not understand English, but they understand love, and after all, that is the one universal language that we all share.